This is CBC Toronto News. Are you just going through this process so you don't have to pay rent? Not at all. If you think that you've been aggrieved, if you think that somebody's done something improperly, go through the process of having it adjudicated. It's a process James Reagan knows well. By bringing back-to-back -back complaints to the Ontario Landlord and Tenant Board, he's managed to live in two pricey Toronto apartments over the last 10 months without paying a dime. His current landlord calls him a professional tenant. She says she's been conned. Reagan says he is just exercising his rights. And tonight, all of this has people calling for change in how the Ontario Landlord and Tenant Board operates. It was Trevor Dunn's voice you heard there grilling Reagan. So, Trevor, he joins us now. You also spoke to his current landlord. What did she tell you? Well, Mike, she says that Reagan lied to her to get into the apartment in July. He hasn't paid any rent, and the process to evict him is dragging on as he lives rent-free. And yes, according to court documents, this is not the first time it's happened. Robin Ennis is proud of the apartment she rents on the upper floors of her Avenue Road home. Three bedroom, two bathroom, ensuite laundry, one car parking. It's worth thousands of dollars a month in rent, but since July, she's seen nothing. It's never pay been a cent paid. The rent is in arrears. Her tenant is 62-year-old James Reagan. Ennis says he approached her on June 30th about renting the apartment. They signed an agreement to lease with Reagan promising first and last month's rent, a credit and criminal background check. He appears very well healed, very um, uh, connected. But the next day, Reagan showed up unannounced, claiming he urgently needed to store valuable art in the apartment. He literally stole the keys. Uh, when I wasn't looking, and then under his breath told me he'd see me at the landlord-tenant tribunal. Ennis had no idea that the day before she met Reagan, he had been evicted from a condo he was renting near Old Mill and Bloor. Court documents say Reagan moved in in October 2015, agreeing to pay $3,200 a month. He didn't pay any rent. An eviction order was issued by the Landlord and Tenant Board. Reagan appealed and lost, but the entire process took eight months, during which Reagan lived rent-free. He games the system. CBC News tracked Reagan down at the Landlord and Tenant Board earlier this month, where he's fighting to stay in Ennis's apartment. Why haven't you paid it's your gone, rent, sir? It's gone out of track because the legal opinions that I've been given are, are indicating that there's a, a, a breach of, of, of the landlord's responsibility. That's the process. If you feel that you've been wrong, you just take the matters to court. Reagan has complained about a faulty air conditioner in the apartment and that he can't access the parking spot. The air conditioners are under six years old. They are maintained every spring. When you don't pay for a lease, you don't have the right to park. You don't have the right to live here. This is my home. I want it back. Ennis also wants the rules, the laws around rental disputes to be fixed because she says they're not helping her. Her matter, as mentioned, is in front of the Ontario Landlord and Tenant Board. They had a hearing on September 8th, but it had to be pushed back until late November because Reagan said he didn't receive the right paperwork in the mail. And Trevor, we published this story on our website earlier today. What sort of reaction have you been getting? It's been a huge reaction, Mike. Uh, there, it's been one of the most read stories on cbc.ca. A reporter from Saskatoon reached out to me, said they're having big problems with it there. And I've heard from two landlords here in the GTA saying they are dealing with very similar tenants and the legal system isn't helping at all. Mike and Merwell, back to you. Okay, thanks. So we want to get a better idea of just how common this sort of story is. Harry Fine is a former adjudicator for Ontario's Landlord Tenant Board, as well as a paralegal uh, with more than four, 15 years' experience with landlord tenant disputes. So you see this case, Harry. Uh, is it unusual or emblematic of the system? It's not. It's not typical, but it happens all the time. Uh, there was one a couple of years ago that was highly publicized, and the woman not only was finally evicted, and she had victimized probably her seventh landlord. But fortunately, and thank you to the police, that she was charged criminally with fraud and she spent time in jail. Uh, unless that happens more often, unless police stop saying this is a civil matter, this is a landlord-tenant matter, uh, this is going to continue. 
So without making it a, a criminal matter, then how, how can the system change well, to make it at least less cumbersome well, sure. for the, both? The legislation has to be changed. People talk about the Landlord-Tenant Board being the problem. Uh, they're not perfect, but they're not the problem. The problem is the legislation. It's a political problem. The legislation, the Residential Tenancies Act, is a provincial statute, and it's unbalanced. The biggest problem with it is the amount of time it takes to get an eviction and how easy it is to create delays. Under the Act, if you're evicted, uh, as this gentleman was, Mr. Reagan was evicted at the board, uh, you can file an appeal to the Superior Court. You have an automatic right. You don't need leave or permission from the court. Uh, you can file an appeal. It's $181 to file your appeal. And then Mr. Reagan will be eight more months without paying rent. There should be some sort of test, uh, a precondition to filing an appeal. That's one thing I would do. What's the lesson here for landlords? Is there a way to better protect themselves? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I'm not blaming the landlord. We, should, uh, we shouldn't assume that people are, are defrauding them. But landlords have to be more careful. Landlords need to understand they're in a business, and many landlords don't. They need to do credit checks. They need to do tenancy checks. Uh, they need to speak to previous landlords. They need to not jump at the first tenant who comes at them. It's not enough to simply have a tenant say, well, here's my letter from my employer. I make X dollars. Uh, letters can be so easily forged with downloaded graphics of company names. They need to take more care. They're in business. They forget they're in business. People ask me, is the law unfair? Is the Residential Tenancies Act unfair in favor of tenants? It is. But the problem, as much as it's unfair, the problem is that small landlords don't understand the system. They're going into business. They forget they're going into business. They don't educate themselves. That's the bigger story, I think. All right, so more vigilance on the part of the landlords and perhaps some legislation changes and we could see... Absolutely need legislative changes. The fact that tenants can go to a hearing uh, in Ontario since 2007, the law changed so that a tenant can raise any issue at a hearing when he's there for rent. So it stops the process, restarts mm. the process, everybody goes home. If it's a rent hearing, they should deal with the rent. Mm. And the government needs to change that. All right, thank you so much for your insight, my, Harry. My pleasure.